most of my life in this field and the first part of it was with supplements and I don't consider herbs supplements you could as a supplemental to your your diet the problem is their foods some countries have made the mistake of calling them medicinos or medicines and that's not appropriate these are food sources with specific actions and all foods have specific actions there isn't any one food that doesn't have a specific action and then some Plants have a consciousness. All things are pieces of the whole consciousness. These are states of consciousness. Everything is conscious at one level or another. And merging consciousnesses together makes more strength and power. It's neat because let's say you're a carpenter and someone hires you to come into their house and do work. Well, that's what you're doing with the plants. This plant is a liver plant. It's, we, we take and hire, basically, this plant to come in and fix our liver and that's how we do the uh, the herbs we we use them for their specialty and what they're here for thank you thank you thank you because if we look at our repertoire of tools that we need to help ourselves we don't have many but the good examples that a lady here with cancer in the lungs she bleeds all the time and her her oncologist said well you're probably going to bleed out and die that way it's like oh man I have a bleeding formula. That formula stops internal bleeding. So she can use that and, and strengthen her capillaries at the same time with working on the parathyroid and she'll be okay and we can keep working and working and working. That's the beauty. If any practitioners are viewing this, this is the beauty of botanicals. You can use them as antispasmatics, uh, as homeostatics, uh, or hemostatics. You can use them as anything uh, you want the, 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 the range that they have is so incredible it's, it's amazing remember the raw foods is cleaning and strengthening in and of themselves then you're looking for more tools to help us be more aggressive and tools that are more powerful than say the foods of today well that you're getting then to what I think God made to help us and all the other animals seem to think it too is that the herbs and the herbs are specific. They, I've always said herbs are tissue specific in their focus because they, they, they go right to the kidneys, they go right to the livers, whatever herbs you're using. At least we've had 5,000 years of recorded history using them. So when someone uses the word alternative, it kind of fries my bacon, so to speak, because I hate that. When you try to lay on us, we're alternative. The audacity of that the insult to the supreme being for that is unreal. It is, I told a cardiologist once when he t said I was radical, I said, let me see what's radical. Take a few natural herbs, which are more vegetables, and eat a raw diet and clean out your uh, lymph system, which will back up all the cholesterol and calcifications. Or is it more radical to be gutted like a hog in your veins or arteries pulled out of your legs and put into your heart and then just to have it happen again in six, seven years? He couldn't say anything. You know, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm not doing these videos for the uh, for selling herbs. I'm doing them to educate you and change the consciousness on the planet. Get out of this idea you're using herbs for diseases. That never works that way. It will never work. That's why you, you they talk about the herbs and disease. They don't work. Of course they don't work because herbs are not meant for diseases. Herbs are meant for body parts, not diseases. Diseases is man's creation. Body parts is God's creation. And that's why the herbs are here. And it's a wrong focus. You're trying to use an herb to cure cancer. That doesn't work. All right, so let's put it into our realm. You're trying to use an herb to break down tumors. Well, you're a little more successful. But you won't be successful until what? You get your kidneys filtering and your skin is sweating. Herbs weren't meant by the Creator for diseases. Man created the concept of diseases, so then why did the Creator create botanicals? Well, what's the body made of? Tissues. Cells. Groups of cells called tissues put into organs or glands. When you start looking at herbology, herbology is specifically for organs and glands. Remember, herbs are generally considered for the use of treatment of. But when you turn it around and realize you're going to use herbs to enhance and repair cells and to clean the body more aggressively. And when you start looking at that, you see that indeed that's, that's what they're made for. There's herbs just for the kidneys, not to detox, but enhance the function of.
the kidneys. That sort of thing. Yeah. Because they just accelerate cleansing. They accelerate. They're herb to rebuild kidneys. There's herbs to rebuild livers. There's herbs to rebuild all kinds of tissues in the body. There's herbs for everything out there. There's herbs for the lymph system. There's herbs to break up tumors. There's herbs to kill parasites. I mean, we have a, a, a pharmacopoeia like nobody's business and a loving pharmacopoeia. Sure, there's toxic herbs out there. Compare it to pharmaceuticals. I mean, come on. You know, we, the herbal kingdom is incredible, I'm telling you, and it has been for thousands and thousands of years. We have at least a 5,000 year recorded history of the use of botanicals. So when someone comes up and, and, and makes comments negative about that, it's just after a while, it's like, uh, uh, uh. You know, souls have got to grow. Holistic is using whole, not using supplements. Supplements are not holistic thinking. Herbs are because they're holistic. They're whole in themselves. You're taking the whole plant or part of the plant. In chemistry, when you're using supplements, you're isolating the chemistry out of these factors and then potentizing them or putting together in, in whatever a biochemist think is good for you. And in the um, absorption of things, the malabsorption of things today, we're, we're seeing high potencies in supplements that might not need to be. Um, you know, Gearson got their butts a little kicked with the FDA with 100,000 uh, units of A and beta carotene. You have to be careful with things and the oils. You're not trying to pound the human body. You're trying to simply clean it and repair it. And you can simply do that with the chemistry that it's designed to use. It's not difficult to understand that. People take off on paleo diets and things like that. And it's like, please. Got a question about herbs. How exactly do they work? What happens in the body? Do they work because of the magnetics or nutrients or what? I think it's a combination of all that. I really do. I think it's the, the consciousness of them. It's, a, it's the, 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 the constituents. I mean, if you start looking at what we're learning, we, years ago we didn't know a lot about the chemistry of plants. Now we have a lot of people tearing open. You can buy some of these herb books for like four or five hundred dollars. Really, I got some nice herb books here that are very expensive, very uh, intellectual into chemistry. So we're finding these individual constituents in these plants, and now we're giving them different names. But these individual constituents that we had not known before have unique individual properties. That's what the pharmaceutical companies find. So they find these individual constituents that they think, whether it's a, 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 an alkaloid or a flavonoid or whatever it is, they find these, mostly alkaloids, but they find these, uh, these individual constituents that has the power to affect tissue in a certain way, and then they isolate that and then try to make a, a, a medicine out of that. Didn't realize that the plant needed to put all that chemistry synergistically working together. The power's still there. But it, it is working synergistically, therefore it does not have a side effect to it. Most of these symptoms are all detoxification symptoms. The only ones you really have to be concerned with is, would be an anaphylactic shock, which is the throat stricture closing, and we've only seen it once, and that was with a circulation formula, and it was uh, uh, dealt with a particular tree that uh, this lady was allergic to and she had a little allergic reaction and that was probably 30, 40 years ago. So I, I've never really seen any of that but your body, your skin is going to respond, that's your third kidney, you're going to see a lot of responses, sinuses breaking loose, ears popping, uh, even tumors growing, swelling of the lymph nodes. We don't like too much of that because it shows how, how backed up the kidneys are and how you're not filtrating the lymph well but uh, ultimately uh, this will all break loose. You worry about mixing any combination of your herbs. Someone asked me about mixing any combination of our herbs. No, they're all going down the gut. They all know where to go. They all have their own consciousness. They all know where to go. I love mixing different herbs. It works better, I think. Single formulas, you're sitting there and it's okay. You get more power when you, when you have less and more people working together. Yeah, us all working together as a team is a lot more powerful than just me. So that's why I love teamwork, and we all are a great team. You guys are doing well. You're helping people. I just love you guys. You guys are great. That's why I just dump all the herbs down the hatch at the same time. They all are individual. They all have individual consciousness. They all know what they're doing. They're individual chemistries. Uh, and everybody just works synergistically together like nature does in the first place. I find you'll go a lot farther, a lot quicker, and a lot more powerful if you do a program as opposed to sitting there taking one herb like Oda Cola by itself. 
you put it in with some buddies and they all work together they're strong three three of us big men can do a lot more than one and so when you get some big boys in there working with them everybody's uh, is tearing you apart and fixing you you know so I, I just love the herbs I think you can take all you want I love teas no question about it but you have to heat them up uh, I like raw herbs when you're trying to get to the GI tract and uh, you want to get to the liver or pancreas, I use the raw herbs or the dried herbs or powdered or capsules. That if you want to get in systemically, I like, I like the tinctures because they absorb well, little digestions needed, whoo whoomp, suck it right in. The alcohol actually takes it to a cell much quicker. So there's some real benefits for alcohol, but it does yield you 98% of that herb. Glycerin or vinegar, you only get 60-65% of the herb. And in this and at my level of work, there's no way I can just give you half of what that herb can do. There's just no way you want to spend your money and only get half the, the power that, that a, a alcohol tinctured herb can do. But again, that alcohol has merged with the chemistry and vibration of the plant. It makes it strong and does make it carry to a cell, but uh, it definitely is powerful. Like this gentleman, which we won't mention any names, made a statement of how alcohol destroys the herbs and everything else. And it's like, oh, you know, I mean, there's some of these people out there with these kind of wacko thinking things that just doesn't, I don't know. But I do want you to, to know is that we have uh, moved our alcohol. I've always wanted grape alcohol, and so we finally got grape alcohol. And it's a much better alcohol, and it's really good. The problem with uh, using any other minstrum, and I've talked about this before when you make herbal formulas, is glycerin. Now, our glycerin infused is a whole different process, but the typical distillation uh, by... Um, uh, glycerin or vinegar only yields 60 to 65 percent of the herb. If you're spending money for a formula, you want that formula to be the most powerful formula that you can buy for that money. Now, you say herbs survive the high heat required to prepare them. Did I say that? Have I ever said herbs survive high heat required to prepare them? I've never said that. I don't know where you guys come up with these things. Like the, this one lady this morning said, I said that Something about, uh, what was that? Something about vegetables uh, have high glucose levels and yeah. that you get too much glucose. And like, what? I love people that don't see the things that's really being said. Here you go. You say herbs survive high heat. I don't heat no herbs. I mean, the only way you see that is in your teas. And when you're boiling teas, you want to remember that you don't boil the leaves and flowers. You just need to simmer them. And then the, uh, the roots is what you boil because you're, you're boiling something really hard and you want to break, down, break it down and get the goodies out. The only time you would uh, heat anything is the teas. And you know what's fantastic to me is when you heat a tea, when you boil even a tea, it has incredible power to it. Isn't that cool? But when you cook a food, it's dead. You know, amazing. That's a God thing. That's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, but I don't, uh, I, I'm for raw, raw, raw. I'm even for raw herbs. All these herbs you guys are getting are all raw. Some are dried, some, uh, shade dried. When we, when we dry, we shade dry, and then we powder. Uh, I have some fresh herbs, which is parsley and cilantro, things that we can readily get year-round. But I can't put fresh herbs in formulas so you can't get them in the mid of winter and you want them now. Uh, you just can't do it that way. Not in a clinical setting and not in a worldwide approach like that. Can't do that. Uh, let me see. Should teas be from fresh herbs or packaged dry products? If fresh herbs are always the best. I mean, if you can get fresh herbs and take them, they're always the best. But you've got to be careful because some of them are very potent fresh. That's the ultimate, in my opinion. Everything is ultimate fresh. Uh, the the uh, uh, animals would have the fresh side of this. Uh, but in, in a world like ours and using it to help people, you have to dry them. But you can see, even in a, even in a dried state, and even cooked, they come around and help you and love you and, and, and heal you. How could you beat that? I mean, you could take Lupron or some other uh, testosterone or estrogen inhibitor and, uh, you know, kill yourself. Whew. You know, it's funny. 
with the herbs you can cook them and they still have healing properties that's how powerful they are so I like the teas I like the raw I like I mean I love all levels of that I I think the probably the freshest the herb is the best it is for you uh, in practical in a situation in a clinical work and getting people certain herbs that only have a short lifespan and blah 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 but uh, I like teas as well though we've used a lot of teas on people it's a cheaper way to go I don't think it's as nutritive of course but definitely very powerful now this is Sherry I have a question about the herbs is the liquid herb stronger than the capsules no I thought so but no what we're finding is the capsules are much more stronger than the liquids and, and I have a one to four concentrate which we in a percolation distillation type of issues as strong as you can get and still have a medium there to deal with and so uh, that and then we let us we, we distill for uh, 30 days or close to it so as strong as you can get almost uh, I know many herbs goes one to one one to one to two but you're way out there you have to re uh, uh, you know dry redry I mean there's a lot of processes and by then I think you're starting to lose lose the herb a little bit uh, homeopathics to me good for treatment based thinking but I like the power as strong as you can get an herbal formula better to go pick and do that's for sure uh, what about your tinctures and the dried herbs together would they work together to accelerate both benefits well whenever you're doing dried herbs uh, they're going to have more benefit in the GI tract because they have to go through a little bit of a digestive uh, process first but they're going to be real good to get immediately to the stomach and the colon the pancreas and the liver I like the liquids too because they're much more readily absorbed without a lot of digestion the alcohol definitely is a carrier going to pull it through the body faster and you're going to feel it maybe but boy it's potential to really get the cells uh, head to toe is really great so I do like you I like the combination of the two uh, but for more GI tract more real time right on on the cells uh, definitely the dried herbs down the gut but the tinctures are great to get absorbed quicker uh, again even with malabsorption I think the tinctures will will help with that uh, quicker and better do all herbs contain toxic elements I don't know how to answer that because what's healthy in, in, in chemistry what's healthy as a whole isolating each of its parts then can be toxic as individual parts so you can't say that all things have toxins in them from one viewpoint but then you can say everything has toxins in them from a viewpoint because I don't care what you have you can find arsenic in apple seeds all kinds of things how many people are juicing apple seeds so you can find all kinds of gnarly chemistry out there as a rule it's buffered so when you're having plants and your your fruits and everything like that because vegetables are just herbs guys they're just not they're hybrid herbs so herbs aren't toxic unless you isolate I'll say some of your stronger chemistry is your alkaloids and tannins your alkaloids are for the liver your tannins for your kidneys and that's uh, they'll beat you up every time iced tea got me real bad the, the tannins of course get my, my kidneys and alkaloids of course hit your livers so by themselves an alkaloid can kick your hiney this is why pharmaceuticals kick hineys the same herbs don't that's why comfrey doesn't hurt you although they want to take it off the market because of the alkaloids it's like excuse me we aren't children out here all right and we don't need mr government telling us what to do and what not to do and what to eat and what not to eat sorry go take a hike but that that's the sort of thinking that they have and if you've got an alkaloid in something uh, it's buffered but again if you take a pharmaceutical like a uh, particularly a diet pill that's high alkaloids <laughs> kick your butt so that's that's the difference in the isolate versus the um, buffered and that's why I like nature in that way all these things are nature it's a big difference there are poisonous herbs no question there's poisonous plants out there there's no question about that we don't use those in herbology but there are poisonous plants as there's there's something bad everywhere you turn these uh, lymphatic formulas there's so many great lymphatic herbs 
And there's so much misinformation about the herbs even. I mean, there's so much crap on herbs. Copycat herb books, even some of the better herbalists have no clue because they don't work in these high clinical settings like I do where I'm using gallons. I'm using gallons of, of poke root, blood root, uh, chaparral. Oh my God, these are the most toxic herbs. Are they really? I've had babies, I've had people that are, that are in their 90s that were febile, 80 pounds on them for years. Never saw any liver toxicity, never saw any toxicity because we do everything together holistically. We're into the raw, we're into the herbs, we're doing everything together and that power cannot be beat because I'm telling you up at this high level, if we can't get you and you can't help yourself at these high levels, you're in major, major trouble. And there's no way the allopathic even stands a chance except by surgery. Surgery is the one place that I love good surgeons. Herbs can get... I, I learned one thing, don't ever underestimate herbs because they will literally kick your butt. Uh, that's, that, they're great, uh, but they can kick your butt. I, I remember I went down in a coma, almost uh, uh, near a coma with, uh, with Peruvian bark and I've always wanted to call Christopher's uh, son and say get that out of your book because it is too dangerous of an herb uh, to have out there for people to, to have some idea that they could use it because it's about dosages when it comes into real strong toxic herbs and um, there, there's not a lot of them and of course I, I, I looked all through my uh, repertoire years ago to see if anything could have any toxic effects and I've never found any Someone asked me a question about wormwood. You know, one of the problems that we face here is the toxicity uh, uh, or the concept of toxicity in herbs. And this is true. There are a few. Dr. Christopher has a herb in his book called Peruvian Bark. Uh, I've never contacted them, but they need to remove that herb. In low dosages, it, they claim that it's a neurological rebuilder. However, it is where we get quinine. And I overdosed on that and ended up in a coma. And uh, this is a major neurotoxin. Uh, outside of that, you know, not too many herbs are toxic. You'll see in my lymphatic form is I use poke root, blood root. These blood root will pull a tumor right out of your body. It's what black salve's made from. But uh, I've used gallons of these on people, on little old ladies that are 80 years old and, and 80 pounds and never had any toxic effects. Wormwood, um, I don't use that extensively. I use it for a couple of weeks, maybe a month to kill the major bigger worms in the body. Uh, they say it's good for cancer, but I can tell you I don't use it extensively, but it should be used for a couple of weeks or a month to kill any worms, flukes, the bigger boys, you know, tapes, things like this. Is it better to eat them raw or try to use them in a tea or try to tincture them? Well, you can do all those different things. I personally, I, I, I see nature as raw, so I think in the raw state, but boy, you have to be real careful in the raw state. Uh, just like raw foods, raw herbs are real butt kickers. Raw, try it, but I go small amounts uh, with the raw and see where you are on the raw. Uh, always tease, you know, dry them, air dry them outside somewhere, you know, with a screen or something and air dry them real uh, uh, slow, makes for strong tea. Uh, and then you can always tincture them too. So all of those are all good things. If you're going to do no raw and you're going to do a few herbs, why waste your time? You know, you've got to do the diet, some percent of that. You can't continue to, to, to consume dead animals and beans and uh, grains and cheeses and all these things and never get well because you never will get well. And those that are doing it that feel well won't feel well as they get older because that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a world of people who eat this and take a look at what's happening to everybody. Uh, I as long as I've been uh, working with people and their health issues, I've never seen herbs interfere with chemical medications. If there's any interference, it's simply that the body's going to kick these medicines out. It's going to kick these pharmaceuticals out of the body. I, I've never seen anybody have problems with them. I mean, there are a couple people that have had an anaphylactic shock to certain things within the herbs, but I think I've only had two people, three people in 40 years 
I mean, come on, that's not bad at all. When you look at the pharmaceutical world, that's like shocking. The death rate, we accept a certain amount of kill ratio in the allopathic community. Nurses have a certain kill ratio, believe it or not. Well, where are those things? The medical doctors seem to have an unlimited kill ratio. Uh, but, there, you know, there's a point where the eyes start raising and saying, wait a minute, you're killing too many people. Pharmaceutical companies doesn't seem, the FDA doesn't seem to care. They would rather raid somebody over raw milk or about supplements making some claims as opposed to pharmaceuticals that are killing people. It's okay. We, you can kill 20% of your people, 10% of your people. You can give 20% of your people uh, heart attacks and strokes. It's okay because you're wonder you're you're doing wonderful work with the pharmaceuticals. Well, who's saying that? Who's who's really bringing that up? The pharmaceutical companies? I mean, these guys serious karma. Really bad stuff going on there. And the FDA has got his chest out and, and, and backing up the kill ratios and stuff of this. And this is sickening. This is revolting. Herbs bring out the problems. Now, I'll put it this way, and this is something you might look at, and it might be true with homeopathics as well, but I know it is with the herbs here. They don't cause problems, they bring problems. Now, you know, there are some herbs once in a while your body just doesn't want. Now, there's no question. The vibrations are wrong for you at this time or whatever. I granted that. But as a rule, herbs only bring out what's only there. Whatever's already there, herbs bring that out into your face. Uh, just remember that. Herbs bring out what's already there. And what's already there is what we're going after there to help all of you guys get remedy there. This is about a liver enzyme here that went up. Uh, if you're on too strong of lymphatic formulas, they're going to pull the, the, the acids out of the liver much more aggressively. And you can see elevated liver enzymes. The one reason we kind of took people off of lymph node too is that real strong on the liver. So yeah, some of these herbs can get real strong on the liver. But uh, uh, generally, if you see a liver enzyme go up, it's just your body detoxifying. And I would turn around and go out and put yourself on the liver gallbladder because if you see a liver enzyme going up, you have liver gall liver or and or gallbladder problems. So you really want to clean that up. That's the first sign when you see elevated liver enzymes that your lymph system is not flowing through the liver like it should, and you're breaking down the liver, therefore you're seeing the enzymes of the liver going up there. Take a look at the uh, formulas that you're on. If you're on too many lymphatic formulas, back down a little bit, or if you're on a lymph node too, back down a little bit on it, and just clean your liver out. But this also is a, a suggestion that you have liver problems. We see this whenever we go to the eye. So get a picture of your eye and look at your liver gallbladder area. I think you're going to find uh, some uh, chronic lymph problems or, or even some genetic weaknesses for that matter. <clears throat> Talking about children, what's the easiest way to get the tinctures into small children? Fart? No, I no, you do that. My kids are having a problem with their taste. No kidding. Well, Trader, Trader, I'll say, my dear, uh, you want to put them in some grape juice? Is the best juice to hide the uh, liquids in there is, is grape juice. Not apple juice, not orange juice. Great juice. Now, can mix some herbs in with applesauce. That's what a lot of folks do. Uh, some of these kids are just belly right. I'm amazed at some of these kids. They take their dosages right down. But in reality, they are a bit strong. So you might find some juices and flavorings to help them with that. Uh, certainly they're strong. I wish I had a better minstrum that uh, had a flavor and that we could extract so much out of them, but uh, out of the herb. But vinegar is not, and uh, glycerin are real way down, and I don't like glycerin at all. And I hate vinegar. My issue is don't don't always use laxative type herbs. They're they're addictive. Uh, my form is clean. The mucoid plaque. Mucoid plaque is relatively simple and easy to clean off the bowel wall. Generally speaking, ours will make your stool black or you'll get them in pieces either way. Um, I don't use, I mean, I do use some bitnite and charcoal that's in our GI broom, but I put a lot of astringents in there. The ultimate goal for me is it's easy to clean the bowel wall off. There's the GI tract, the small and large intestines. It's easy to do that. It's not difficult. The real issue is in the wall. 
That's interstitial lymphatic constipation. That is a lot more serious. This is where most of the IBSs are, the cancers are, the polyps come from. Everything comes from with where the cells are and the two fluids are. So that that's really what my formulas are designed to help draw. That's why I do lymphatic one capsules, by the way, to help draw, to help pull the lymph system through the wall and that's where you want to see mucus in your stools. Even raw foods will help you do that. When you start to see mucus in your stools you know your wall is cleaning, in the wall is cleaning and that's really key there. Luke, let's see, what did you think would be okay if water fast take your herbs at the same time? I think I addressed that yesterday about water fasting and taking the herbs. Someone did. You can. I suppose it'll kick your butt a little bit, but uh, you can or just water fast. Try both and see how you like each one of them. Do you think it would be okay to water fast and take your herbs at the same time? Luke, this is a good question, Luke. I've never water fasted and taken herbs. And we don't, we've water fasted a few people. Gosh, I can't remember if we gave them herbs or not. I think you could try it. I think it'd be a butt kicker. <laughs> but uh, either way, do a water fast with nothing, no herbs whatsoever. That's a great fast. And then take a, a go on a fast and try the herbs and see. Uh, let me know what your experience is. It'd be interesting. Uh, I wonder how long I can stay on that formula. Uh, let's see, is there any downside to use it as a daily tea? No, I've got people taking these herbs for years. I've had little old ladies, uh, 80 pounds, taking these herbs full bore for years, children, years. Uh, not that I promote that, because I don't, you know, my, my philosophy is let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. Uh, good philosophy to have. No, it's not necessary to take any of these things for life. The whole idea, I think, is the Hippocratean idea of let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And I was talking about that in an earlier video. You want your diet to be what you live and sustain and have vigor and health from. What is the difference between you tinctures and your capsules? Well, tinctures are obviously different. One is, uh, they're all organic herbs. They're all one to force. But with the herbs, they're just ground up. We just grind our herbs up, grind them up in powder form, and then encapsulate them. With the tinctures, of course, we have to put a minstrel in there. We have to put a medium in there to pull all the good stuff because we want a liquid. You have to pull all the nutrition out of a plant you can get. So the tinctures, to me, tinctures just go into the body a little quicker because we have so much malabsorption and digestive problems. When you go in your herbs are not liquid and they're in just been powdered, that's just taking a, a, an herb and just powdering it down and eating it that way. That, take, that has to go through digestion and absorption. But the, the good reason for that is it'll work on the bowel wall. So I have the herbs that'll work on your bowel wall, except the kidney capsules. I have all the other ones. The lymphatic capsules work on the bowel walls, the, uh, the stomach and bowel formulas, the uh, heal all capsules, the GI broom, all those help to clean and restore the GI tract. And the liquids are for people that I see very malabsorbed and hope I can get that route as well so we can get to the lymph nodes quicker. So that's always been my thought with the tinctures is that we can get to those lymph nodes quicker because your whole suffering is geared on how fast you can get that lymph filtering through your kidneys. Your whole suffering, your whole nine yards, nothing else. How fast can I get my kidneys to filter this crap acid out of my body? And that's your whole gauge to go by because there's nothing else than sweating. So you have those two gauges, filtration of the urine and sweating. Those two things have to take place before you can claim well, Bill. Should we use one or not the other? No, I, I have this design so you use a little of both. That way I'm, I know I'm getting good into the GI tract, but I know I'm giving you some liquids and tinctures that I can get out and into the system maybe better. So it's just, I love them both. That's why I use them both. That way, we're for sure getting something in you. Some people are grossly malabsorbed. You have IBS, you got Crohn's, you're malabsorbed. Period. So one of your questions has been on adaptogens. And you betcha I love adaptogens. Uh, sometimes adaptogens are hot, like ginseng.
So if you have prostatitis or you have a lot of acidosis, I don't recommend adaptogens right off because it just adds to the heat factor of the body. But uh, I love adaptogenic herbs. Very powerful on the tissue and I really think plays a vital role in genetic remembering and the strengthening of cells. Um, uh, adaptogenic herbs, you betcha. I mean it strengthened the body up. I like cleansing the body uh, first uh, because of all the, the excessive heat and, uh, and the acidosis of the body and all the damage and stuff and then, then build it up. All this medical doctor needed to do was get him an herb book and go read about the herbs in them to understand the beauty of those herbs. And once you start reading of the beauty of herbs and their effect on the body, forget pharmacology, forget these toxic, deadly chemicals, because we have beautiful herbs that embrace and heal the people that use them and the animals that use them. Hell, half the animals would be dead right now if herbs were toxic. Man has got to quit living in fear and medical doctors have to either own up or you guys are going to run yourself in some big bad karma trouble. You already are. And it's time you stop this sort of insanity and wake up. Now there's a lot of good, I've got a lot of friends that are great medical doctors so this is not geared to you guys at all. You guys are doing well. A lot of medical doctors use our herbal formulas. I've got a, a lot of osteopaths that have been using our bowel formulas for years. But you get these harebrained wacko medical doctors once in a while that says crap like this that scares these poor people. So the worst thing you can do is go to someone, uh, particularly a medical doctor, and ask him an opinion about herbs or natural healing. If someone does that, then you maybe deserve what you get. Because you don't go to a plumber and ask an electrical question, nor would you go to a medical and ask him an herb question. Now, I want you to keep in mind that always, when you're thinking about botanicals and you're thinking about how do you use them in conjunction with the diet to get well, know why we're using them. We're using them to help you accelerate cleaning of the lymph system. Those are the more stringent herbs, the lymphatic herbs. We are helping to rebuild kidneys out there, rebuild endocrine glands out there, clean up the bowels, and rebuild cells. So look at what we use herbs. We use herbs for cleaning and strengthening. And that's how you kind of want to look at it because looking at herbs to treat diseases is, an, is ridiculous and obviously that whole uh, concept of treatment of diseases is illusionary and has cost a lot of human lives, a lot of human suffering, and part of the mix of why humans are at this level of decay of their health. So um, just keep in mind that I, we always recommend the, the uh, stomach and bowel formulas, the lymphatic formulas, the kidney formulas, the endocrine gland formulas, the glandulars related to the endocrine glands. Those are the focus with the herbs. Because if I sit and take every case and tell you what you need to take, then it's just chewing up too much time and I'm leaving a lot of poor people without being able to talk to them. The very few companies out there that have, in my opinion, decent herbs, first of all, and second, there are good ones though, uh, out there. I like some good companies. Guy Herbs are good. I like Herbs Etc. These are high quality herbs. I like these people. I like Ed Smith. but. Uh, uh, but you know, there, there's some good herbal companies out there, but I, they don't have one to force like mine. And I, I, I have a different take because I'm a healer dude, so I'm in a different take of what I'm looking at my formulas to do. I'm not looking at formulas for diseases. That's that's insanity. You might as well uh, go chase rainbows and look for pots of gold. But. Uh, you can use herbs to clean and, and rebuild tissue, and when you do, you're always successful. Uh, time, of course, relative, but uh, you're always successful. I think the end of the day, herbal formulas, it's going to be who can make the best formulas, and not one ego over another. Because I listen to each and every one of you when you say, I'm using an herb that I, that I heard gets good results. I'm listening to that. And I'm seeing if I'm familiar with that herb and I'm using that herb. The problem with formulas is I don't get to see each herb individually and see how well it works on a person. But I'm not willing to take that chance of just playing with people's health with just, well, let me see if this works. I'm just not because I know formulas work well. 
And I've always, we've tried individual herbs way back when, and I didn't see the power that formulas. That's what my, my, my thing is, we all work better and become stronger as a team than ego one. Ours is one to four. Nobody makes one to four and, 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 and out there that I know of and sells them for anything even close to where we are. You don't get that. One to four is like major. That's why we pay so much for them. But most formulas on the market, you see when you go in a health food store, one to six, one to seven. They're water compared to ours. But if you're going to spend money and you're going to spend your hard-earned money and you're going to go after some serious problems, you want good product. Become a healer. Learn, learn the art of botanical medicine and the, and the world of, of herbs and apply them differently. Don't use herbs to treat diseases. Get away from the whole concept of diseases and start healing people. Start working with people as you're seeing and your eyes showed you back when you were young. And start pulling back to that spiritual side and become a healer. You're going to find that allopathy is going to die away here. It has to. It's going to move like Europeans more into homeopathy and naturopathy. You're seeing that right, and it has to.